So it's still a storage upgrade time and I got a pile of these my books. So my books and easy stores have kind of become popular now because they're relatively cheap ways of getting eight terabyte drives. I got these on an eBay special, so it was a pretty good deal. Um, why didn't I get the easy store? The main answer was because I couldn't get enough of them and I got these straight from Newegg, which was a relatively trusted seller and I can get them. Now, the easy stores apparently have come with reds before. I haven't, I've opened a few, I haven't seen reds in them. But these won't come with reds, but they should come with basically the same drives. Which, I'm not too picky about drives because they're fairly cheap. And now, let's see what we get. So, here's the drive. Looks like all the other MyBook drives, you know, external hard drive. You can take off all the plastic. And, you know, it's an external hard drive. You can see in there, there's the little hard drive hiding inside it. Um, I'm probably going to reuse these enclosures because they're fine enclosures. And just put a, um, I was going to go and put random old drives I have and use them as a pile of external hard drives because that's normal. For me, I just, more external hard drives never hurt. And for now, I'm just going to try these all in software and see how they do. So I have a Linux system here I'm going to go try it on. I'm curious what the performance is going to be like. And then I'm also going to use it to make sure all the smart data on the drives is good before I open it up. I could run a full bad block scan. It's not a bad idea, but I don't really want to spend forever. And then I'm going to start replacing the drives in ZFS. So it shows up here as a 7.3 tibibyte drive. Um, as we see here, its mic control doesn't want to recognize the USB to SATA controller, which is annoying. But, yeah, I guess that's fine. It works. You could read and write data to it. I have it mounted and copied off all the WD utilities just in case I want to play with them. But right now, we're going to go rip it apart. So, there's kind of a more correct way to do it using cards. I've tried that in the past. I've always seemed to have issues with the whole card method to get these to open because they're just held together by clips. This one appears to just have it so it slides open in this model. They have a new way of clipping it every generation. We're just going to try to pry this open. And here's our drive. So it's a WD80EZAZ. Uh, yeah, it's an 8TB hard drive. You take out the screws, the drive comes out. It works in any other system. So let's go plop it into my little drive bay and see how it performs now. So I'm working on running a benchmark here. I have a custom little FIO script that I use. Um, but the preliminary results are that uh, sequential read and write is about um, 190 megabytes per second, which is fine for a mechanical hard drive. Um, everything else looks fine. Looking at the smart data, it looks fine. Here's the main smart attributes. So you can see there's pretty much nothing on it. There's no hours, eight power cycles, which probably is just me powering on and off. Maybe one or two reallocated sectors or none. The UDMA CRC error count is 1, but that's almost always due to bad cables or something, not a bad drive. And the pending seconds and offline uncorrectable errors are both 0, and that's kind of what I say the most worrying ones of those are. So, looks fine to me. Time to open up the rest of these boxes. So now all the drives have gone through smart to make sure the data is good, and they've been labeled and added to my little spreadsheet of all my drives. So now we're going to upgrade it. So this is going into a ZFS storage solution that's going to replace four existing drives in a RAID Z. And due to how ZFS works, you have to replace them one by one. And I have one extra drive bay, so this is going to take quite a few days and a lot of data. So I'm going to take the top drive right now and put it in the server. And here's the system right now. We have one extra drive bay at the top. We open it, plop the drive in and push it in to be shut and it should spin up and start. These drives do have the 3.3 volt issue but that shouldn't be a problem here because this bay here is a um, five and a quarter to 3.5 bay and those don't have access that one at least the one I'm using does not have access to the 3.3 volt rail so that shouldn't be an issue there. So now let's go into ZFS and replace the drive. So now I have an SSH sys, um, connection to my main server and I find the drive here, it's slash dev slash sdr, which is what I normally use, except for the fact that I'm using ZFS, so I want to use the disk ID. So when you see slash dev slash disk slash by ID, I see a ton of drives, and you have to find out which one it is. 
So let's pipe that into less and take a look. So now looking through here, we see the drive is the WD80 disk drive. Um, so now that's the drive that we want to add. So first of all, we want to do Z pool status dash V. So that'll list all the different drives we have here, and we know which one we want to replace. So now it's going to say it contains XFAT, which I know it does, and I don't care. So I'm going to do dash F to force it to replace. So now it's going to start replacing it. So now if we run Z pool status dash V, we can see it's reslivering the drives. And due to my very large font size, I have to scroll up to realize that 42 megs have been reslivered. It's 0% done, and it also runs a full um, scrub at the same time. And the full scrub on my array takes about 40 hours. So in 40 hours, I'm going to put another one of these drives in to replace that one, and just keep doing it until all the drives have been replaced. In. Well, I just screwed up. So I was talking about how I wanted to change these drives in these bays without shutting down the server, which I did. But I also accidentally unplugged this little hard drive that floats around here, which is the boot drive. So the system basically crashed, which sucks and means I have to shut it down anyway. So, because it's shut down now, I might as well move a few more drives around. So this guy here has two of the eight tail drives, um, like how I want them. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to move the drive in here to the hot swap bay so it can be removed easier. And then I'm going to put the eight tail in here so I can easily take out those. I'm going to move this guy to the bottom because I want the top slot free, because I'm just weird like that. And I've already put another 8 tear in the right bay right here. So, that gives me one more drive to move. So for the ZFS array, we need these two drives here, and this one to get our data working. And I just pulled out one more, and that would be hopefully never needed, because it it's a RAID 5, essentially, or single parity with one drive removed, which should work fine, assuming nothing fails, which it probably won't. And then I just have to tidy up all the cabling. Now, since I took it all apart already, if you see in that very right slot, I have a different drive, and that's the Sun F20, which I got earlier. I think it's going to be a video or two back when you watch it. Um, it's a total of 96 gigs, SLC, PCI Express, SSD, it's 424 gig drives. I'm going to make it an L2 arc for the big one, for the, um, it's going to be an L2 arc for the main hard drive array. The Sun F40 is working as a solid state drive pool for all my solid state drive storage. And now I need to just work on getting this guy back up and running as quickly as I can because I don't like downtime. The infamous waiting for SSH to work after a reboot. So you think, why don't you just look at your screen, and my screen that's connected in the rack apparently doesn't turn on. The power light should be on right here. So that's annoying. Uh, that's another issue I have to look into. I guess I could go grab another monitor, but I'll give it a minute. I'm optimistic. And when we plug a monitor in, we're presented with the exciting blinking underscore, which only means it can't find an OS, so there's a problem with the OS. I doubt the unplug of the boot drive would cause that issue so we're gonna go into the BIOS and it probably screwed up the boot order adding one of those drives. Let's go check the boot order. I forgot what the BIOS key on this board is. So one annoying issue I have is I have three LSI HBAs in it which uh, one's branded as a Seagate warp drive though which means it takes forever to post on this guy. Autofocus is going crazy. But I have to wait for three of these stupid drives to post and tell me about all the different drives they all have, which is eh, annoying. It does seem to see all the drives though, which is great. One of those 8 terabyte drives is going to be on there. It does identify them correctly as 8 terabytes, which is what I want. And now we should be going into the actual BIOS. Or the underscore. What the blinking underscore, not the BIOS. That's a bad sign. So my guess for what the issue was, was this drive was in the wrong slot. It also had a piece of tape to disable the SM BIOS, which you need to do for some of the lower end uh, motherboards, consumer boards that don't like the whole SM BIOS thing. But this is an enterprise um, server board, so it doesn't, it'll work with basically every RAID card. So hopefully moving its slot helps. It also, moving that slot also changes which CPU it talks to. 
which might also talk because on these dual boards some slots talk to some CPUs and some talk to the other. And apparently my power button doesn't work so I just have to kind of wait for it to always turn on when it doesn't. It takes about a minute so that's always fun. So this is starting to annoy me. I really can't find out why exactly it's not working. It's still at the blinking underscore. Um, I've tried everything that I think should work so we're gonna just start doing things like taking out all the cards and hoping that's one of them. One of them had some issue or just something. Oh! There's a force enter BIOS when reset option on the management utility thing. So, we're gonna see if that works. I've tried unplugging some of the 8TB drives just in case maybe this board doesn't like those 8TB drives plugged in. I don't know. I took out the card I added. I resetted the BIOS. I really can't think of what else it could be. I really hope my board didn't die somehow and just decided not to boot up again. And now all of my different cards all out. And I'm in the BIOS. So there's something wrong with every card, with all the cards. So we're gonna try maybe putting them in different slots and putting them in one by one and seeing on how long it takes before they actually get going again. Also, my system time is wrong, because of course it is. Also, I found the reason why it takes so long to turn on from post. There's a delay by default of 25 seconds for whatever dumb reason. Uh, boot manager. Holy crap, this is slow. I think I have UEFI booting on a drive, which it apparently can't find right now. Huh? Maybe I... I don't know what I would have screwed up, but... I don't know. Let's find out. Should be a UEFI. I know this board supports UEFI. So I get that issue when Justice HBA is in it, so we're gonna try putting all of my other cards in it now and see if we still get the issue to see if it's just this card, because otherwise someone has to get a new HBA for this server and find a way to connect the drives for now. So now we're in with all the cards but the raid card, which means either the raid card failed, which it could have, or it has the 8TB drives plugged in and it doesn't like those drives when it does the first initialization. So the really hacky and horrible fix to this is to unplug all the 8 terabyte drives when it um, does its post and then plug them in. So we're gonna see if that works now. So that technique boot worked and we're booted into the OS now so I'm happy about it. And I had to import the pools because I did not push the cable in right and I always have to remember to unplug the cable which means I need to rewire it so that the 8 tails are plugged directly into the motherboard or get a different HBA. Both of which I don't want to do. So, looking at it now, the one huge thing that I'm happy about is no known data errors, no known data errors. That's great, that means it imports it correctly, all my data is in place. If I go df-h, I can see um, my main storage here, 13 tail. Really, only that big? Okay, that's how ZFS does it, but space it feels about right. So I get to go back to replacing drives like nothing happened. But I now have to make sure all my VMs are started up. So I'm going to get out of this nasty hot garage where the server is and go up to my desktop and start configuring stuff here now. And after all that annoying rebooting and checking up on the system, we've put in our four drives now. It's working correctly. And as we look under this RAID Z1 right here, we have 21.9 TB bytes available, which is basically what we'd expect. One more note in Proxmox, so I have this system set up to run backups uh, three times a week. If it's running a backup, you can't move a VM image, any of them it seems like. I accidentally thought there was an issue with the ZFS array. I was thinking, do I need to recreate it or something? It's like, eh, that's a weird issue, I wish the error codes were better. The other thing is you noticed how I have my 2 terabytes array, which is almost all full, only 74 gigs available. The RAID Z1 of my 4 terabyte drives has two tibby bytes available, and then the big one has that. The problem with having um, non-equal free space like this, or not even proportional at this amount, is when it does writes, almost all the writes are going to the bottom here, which is the eight terabytes, which means it's slower than it potentially could be. And due to how the drives are kind of spread out, um, this free space is not balanced on all of them, which can hurt performance a little bit, but in an environment like this where I favor more free space over performance, it's probably fine. So thanks for watching the little storage upgrade. I have more space to use now and and it probably won't need another upgrade for quite a while and hopefully 
on these drives last while. I'll probably be posting a video if one of them dies and what kind of RMA procedure I have to go through. Or I might just do an update in a year or two for now and just see how they're all doing.